What's going on everybody? I'm Jose Betancourt and as always thank you for viewing my videos. So I have a video here that is showing me using the iPhone X. I had the Note 8. I absolutely enjoyed my user experience with the Note 8. There were certain things that were still a little quirky with Samsung's operating system but and they're slow as hell updating. But nonetheless overall I enjoyed the Note 8. As a matter of fact, I enjoyed the whole Note series. I had the very first one, and people used to mock me when they saw how big my phone was. And when I'd show them the stylus that was built into the Note, they were sort of impressed. 46. The older I get, the more simple I want certain things. So I wanted to go back to the very simple iOS operating system. And once I heard that iOS 12 was going to speed up a lot of the older devices and make the iPhone X super speedy. I went ahead and now not only was it cheaper per month to have the iPhone X, but the price itself was cheaper for the iPhone X. So I bit the bullet and I went for it and I was extremely happy, extremely impressed. So I made this video that you're watching right now. And the next day, to my surprise, there was the iPhone X or the iPhone XS Max in gold, the color I wanted and I'm really impressed by it. And I have some photos to show you. I'm not gonna do a, a, a full-blown review of the 10 Max, but I'm gonna tell you what, after using the iPhone 10, last year's iPhone 10, it was super smooth. After using or updating it to iOS 12, the user experience on the Max is just the same. Things open and close and operate slightly faster because it has a more updated processor the same memory battery life seems to be a little better because quite frankly it's a bigger body and it has a bigger battery so the max uh the biggest selling point is the beautiful screen just a word of advice when they bring out that new iphone 10r which is quote unquote their low budget iphone i advise you if you could find the iPhone 10, go with that one. Uh, it, it has the stainless steel body and it has the high def screen. Do not go for an iPhone 10 R. So I want to show you these photos that I took with the new uh, iPhone 10 max. Now the iPhone 10 S, the smaller version, the 4.8 screen, well, excuse me, the 5.8 screen, it, it has the same camera sensor, 12 megapixels, things of that sort. But what it, they do have is something called Smart HDR. And what it will do is basically, uh, because I take a lot of street photos, and I use a Fuji camera. And by the way, I use uh, manual controls. So I determine what type of style I want for my street photos. And if I see harsh lighting, uh, I run towards it because I want that harsh lighting combined with deep shadows and it gives me uh, an ability to create something in my vision. So I wanted to try some monochrome on the iPhone 10 Max. And remember, you can also get this on the iPhone 10s. So I was really impressed because one of the uh, key selling points for the iPhone for the new iPhone XS was that uh, Smart HDR was going to, because of bigger sensor or, or sm bigger processor, let me just say that, and uh, you know algorithms that are included through the software, uh, because of the new hardware, it coincides and, and it gives it the ability to have this Smart HDR. It, it's going to handle lighting a lot better. Uh, it's just the same as a mirrorless camera or a DSLR where you put it on automatic ISO and the camera will determine certain lighting conditions. So here are the photos that I took with the brand new 10 Max, the iPhone 10 Max. I hate to say 10S Max, it's just too much to say. So the first image is a picture of a red door. And as you can see, there's some uh, harsh lighting, uh, not too harsh, but you can see there's shadows. There's a red door and there's light beaming through the shadows. I wanted to see how it would handle. Now I did use a filter on this uh, straight out of the camera. These are all 
straight out of the camera so there's not much I can do to them as far as editing uh, through Lightroom or through the phone. So I, I did use a filter to give it a little uh, punch for the red. But that was about it. So the second photo, it was really cloudy. So there was actually some blue in the sky and I wanted to see how the phone was going to handle uh, a clear sky with some harsh lighting hitting the top of the windows at the very, very top of the building. And overall, it did pretty well. And then the image with a jogger, literally, there's light condition, two different light conditions directly centered on the sidewalk. You have harsh light on the left and shadows on the right. The new iPhone 10 Max, it did a pretty good job of maintaining a lot of detail through the harsh lighting on the sidewalk on the left, left hand side. And with the shadows, you can still read the back of the jogger's jersey which is pretty good this photo with the buildings and the and the cab i did not touch anything as far as editing or colors color wise this phone really shoots uh some nice colors it, it's uh not too not too uh warm not too cool this particular photo is is pretty nice so as you can see you have some shadows you have the, the taxi inside the shadows and then you have the building getting some of that harsh harsh lighting and then you'll see in the sky you have uh, a cloudy day now this earlier you saw bright blue skies <laughs> and this was maybe an hour later so various clouding conditions the lighting wasn't too harsh in this particular photo because of the shadows but I wanted to demonstrate how it would illuminate the sky because of all of the sun was like beaming on the clouds so you would expect it to somewhat blow up the highlights in the clouds but it did not and it, it not bad and then i took another photo of uh, in between two buildings so i can see the reflection on the left hand side to see if uh, there was going to be once again blown out highlights and i wanted the uh the different contrast I wanted the shadows between the buildings and the sky itself and of course I put the phone in monochrome so I wanted to see its its ability to shoot in black and white I love shooting black and white when I'm in the streets shooting photography so I wanted to see if hey if I set this up on black and white instead of doing it post post process how it would come out and not bad and then we have here uh, a strip of buildings and I shot it in monochrome once again. Of course, you can see how bright the sky is. And it is not blown out. It is pretty impressive. This photo is testing out the portrait mode. And I was able to control it post-process. And I put it down to, I think, aperture 1.8 or maybe 2.0. You can go down as low as 1.4, of course. Let me not, let's not get this uh, confused with, for example, my Fuji 16mm 1.4. This is not a true 1.4 that's on the iPhone 10 Max or the S. It is software based. I believe the actual camera has a 1.8 aperture. So going down to a 1.4 via software, I mean, that's all it is, is software. It's not actually, the phone is not actually going down. Uh, or its sensor is not actually going down to 1.4. But the background looks pretty good. The background looks uh, pretty good. Software-wise, it does a pretty good job. And the last photo is one that I took in monochrome again. And because of the wide angle lens that is on the iPhone 10 Max, uh, I was able to get me a nice, uh, a nice point of view with the, once again, you see all the clouds, you have the sun beaming through the clouds and the, what the, what it seems like the camera, uh, adjusted through its smart HDR, it adjusted the lighting and made the shadows deeper so that 
the uh, I guess it would be just like adjusting your ISO once again, making your ISO as low as possible so that you're you're adjusting for the highlights so that when you're doing any post processing, going through Lightroom, you're not having blown out highlights so that the detail is gone. So it did an overall really good job. And this is a photo that I would take with my Fuji X-H1 uh, sporting the 16 millimeter 1.4. And of course, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to give me the same brightness. I mean, excuse me, the same sharpness. But on a whim, having a camera like this that can handle certain light, multiple lighting conditions in the same scene it is really helpful. It's really helpful and really convenient. Of course, with the Note 8, I was able to take some awesome pictures or shoot some auto awesome photos. So, you know, the old saying is the best camera you got is the one that's on you. So it certainly helps that the phone that you have on you all the time that you're most likely looking at all the time, it certainly helps that it, it, is, it is equipped with software to help you in, in various conditions. And it gives you a nice sensor that allows you to snap an experience or a scene that you randomly see and you can move along. And that's one other thing, this phone and the camera, it launches pretty quick. So overall, uh, with the phone itself, it does the same thing my Note 8 does. It, it, I can receive text the same way, make calls the same way, look at the internet the same way. But the camera, I was really intrigued. And of course, the big screen is beautiful. And, uh, you know, the price is ridiculous, of course. And so is the price of the Note 9. So you have some choices. Uh, but both, from what I hear, the Note 9 has a pretty good camera as well. The Note 8 had a really good camera. And uh, I'm really impressed with the iPhone 10. S and the Max. Uh, as I stated, the, the smaller S is going to have the same exact camera and the same exact smart HDR. So uh, you have some options. I just wanted to show these off and uh, give my review, I guess, my review. I guess I could call this a review of the camera itself. I'm not going to review the phone itself, but overall the user experience has been really, really good. So that's it for me. As always, I thank you for viewing my videos. I'm Jose Betancourt, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.